Joining us now to break down the coronavirus threat is Dr. Dean Hart, an expert in microbiology. So, Doctor, when it comes to the coronavirus outbreak, every week it seems like we learn more and more about COVID-19. Of course, the, uh, the coronavirus that we're dealing with in this immediate. As we learn more, what makes this different than maybe other viruses than we've seen in the past? Well, as everybody learns about this novel virus, the reason we call it novel is because we humans have never been exposed to this particular virus and we have no immunity to it, nor an understanding of it. And when it comes to this, too, uh, we know that this came from China. That's something that uh, at least U.S. public health experts are telling us. And we've even seen U.S. diplomatic cables, as reported by The Washington Post last week, say that they're concerned that maybe this perhaps started in a lab. Now, I don't want to say that this is a bioweapon or anything like that for all of our viewers. I'm saying that they were studying this type of virus in a lab. That's what a lot of uh, people in the U.S. Defense Department say. Does that change anything when it comes to this as compared to if it did start in a wet market as a bat as the, uh, with the initial claim? Well, a natural biological event in a wet market from a bat or a cat or whatever they claim it is, that's nature. Mm -hmm. And nature is awesome. But when you get to man-made manipulation of nature, if it truly came from a laboratory, they were experimenting on it. We won't call it a bioweapon, but if it truly came from a laboratory and they're experimenting on it, the world is in for a lot of problems because China nor the U.S. are the only ones doing this kind of research. Mm -hmm. And what those diplomatic cables said initially, too, and it was, this was verified by uh, an exclusive obtained by Fox News, was the idea that China wanted to prove that they can combat viruses the same way as the United States. So in an effort to do so, they wanted to make sure that they were doing so against a very strong virus. That's the claims that is being made by The Washington Post and Fox News. But when it comes to this virus in particular, too, we see that it's affecting all parts of the world, whether it be Italy, Spain, China, the United States. What is the best way to combat the spread of this? Is it social distancing measures that we've seen in places such as the United States, such as Italy and things like that? Well, in the public health armamentarium, we only have social distancing against something we've never seen, heard of, or experienced immunologically. So we have to start there. The best future will be wearing masks for maybe a year or two, and testing the antibody. Serological testing will tell us if we have to worry about the virus or not. And I want to speak about that, too, because antibody testing, correct me if I'm wrong, would determine how long the virus has actually been in the United States, meaning that people may have developed what's known as herd immunity, correct? Do those two kind of correlate to one another? Well, the main thing it'll tell you, if you had coronavirus 19, if you had this version, you'll have immunoglobulin A. If you had it maybe a month or longer, you might have some immunoglobulin M and G. The different immunoglobulins that will tell you different things. But the main purpose to it is, if you have the immunoglobulins, you probably are immune to recatching it for a certain amount of time. And if you're exposed to the COVID-19 virus and you have the immunoglobulins, all virological theories are that you shouldn't be able to catch it so easily, if at all. And for that, a certain amount of time. Right, and I think that's the good point right there, too, is that that would then suggest that there wouldn't be a second wave, at least not as immediate, correct? Well, the problem is that there are estimates that the there could be only maybe 3, 5, 10 percent of the population that were exposed to it. So if you unleash everybody, maybe up to 90 percent of the people weren't exposed, only through the testing serologically and the nasal swab, which is pretty annoying, but not that invasive. <laughs> right. Uh, that way, I guess you had it too. <laughs> that, that way we can know who is at risk and we can have people that can work out there working. People that can enjoy the outdoors without social distancing can be identified if we don't, can only get these tests accurate and plentiful. And so right now, what would you say is the biggest challenge when it comes to curbing this uh, pandemic? Would you say that it is testing so you can isolate people who you know who have it? Would you say that it's just the fight for a, a vaccine right now? What do you think is the most immediate priority? Well, the holy grail is obviously a vaccine, but to avoid unintended consequences, we may have to wait a year, two years to actually get a vaccine. The big deal now is to get the country up and rolling and get us out of our cave, 
caveman days and the shelter in place, if we can do the tests, we can tell who it is that we're exposed and have probably immunity, so then they don't have to worry. Who that have never been exposed, and they can wear a mask and hope for the best or stay sheltering in place. And those that are contagious, we've got to quarantine them until they're no longer contagious. Mm. And I've heard an interesting way of referring to this, too, recently as the hammer and the dance. The hammer was the lockdown orders. Everybody needs to follow that immediately. That's the way to avoid a a massive outbreak here in the United States. And now we're approaching the dance, which is a little bit harder. The idea where you can let people go back out, but if things break out once again, you have to pull it back in. It's going to be a complicated balance moving forward. But I think you laid it out perfectly about what we need to do as we look ahead and with the different complications that we're going to see, too, that we must overcome. Dr. Dean Hart, I really appreciate you coming on tonight and breaking this down for us. Thank you. You're welcome.